Howdy YouTube, I have run into problems. The water pump on my Lincoln welder that's on my welding truck. The seals and bearings went out on it. As you can see, the bearings got completely full of coolant and locked up. Uh, dumping antifreeze out everywhere. Got it all pushed apart. It barely fit in my press. I used my press that I put the legs on in a video a long time ago. but I don't have enough room in that press because as I'm sure you're well aware, if you've ever pressed something apart and then put it back together, when you push something apart, you're just pushing the piece through a hole, right? So you only need your height of whatever this is, plus your die or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But when you go put it back together, suddenly your height is everything combined and you need that much space in your press. But more of my point than anything to this is I actually run into this problem quite frequently. So that press really just doesn't quite suit my needs. That press was built to go on site for very specific needs. Um, I literally built that thing in a couple hours one day because I had a very unique situation. And yeah, that's kind of the story of it and I've just kept it. So I went and got my pipe squisher portable press thing here. I got my press dies in it instead of the squisher dies that I have in it, right? So with that die in there, I was like, great! Plenty of clearance in here to do this job. All right, plenty of clearance. Except this housing doesn't actually fit in there. <laughs> and yeah, when I set it up in here, I was like, well, that's close. But I'm actually way off to the side. I don't know if you can really see that on the camera, but I'm an inch off to this side and about a half inch from going in. But we're hitting on the round so much that to get it in another half inch, I actually need two more inches of width in here to get it in the right place, to get it centered underneath the ram here. <sighs> so I need to make it at least 12 inches in there to accommodate a lot of the things that I work with. So, after rambling for four minutes at you, what I'm saying is, this is today's project, is making a wider, whatever you call this plate here, thingy, um, wider so I can have 12 inches of space in between these rods when I want it. Um, swap over to this plate when I want to squish pipe or just need to press small diameter stuff. Because there's a lot of stuff that fits in the six inch opening. You know, a lot of bearings and stuff that I do on site work great in here. It's just every once in a while you find something that you need a little more space. So I'm going to remake this plate right here, make myself a bottom die pusher thingy, and that's what this video will be about. I will make some other dies and stuff for bending and whatnot in a future date, but who knows when that'll be. Okay, first thing I want to do is tear all this apart. So we can uh, figure out some dimensions and whatnot and come up with a new design. Anvil? Is that the right word? I think most people call it an anvil. People send me emails asking, am I yelling at you? I got my ears on, so I don't know. Take an ear off. People send me emails asking, what is this rod that I have on here so they can get it, you know, build their own unit. I do sell these units if you want to uh, buy one from me. Um, so yeah, I can do all that for you or you can figure it out yourself. But uh, these rods are from Agri Supply. Uh, I will just put the exact name right here in the video because I can't recall off the top of my head. And I will put a description, what, no. And I'll put some information about what these rods are in the description of this video, too. But in short, these are the hard chrome rods out of hydraulic cylinders. Uh, they're replacement rods for them. Ah! Ah! Yeah, so it's three quarter inch by five inch wide flat bar here with a couple of uh, three quarter inch by inch and a half flat bars vertical to make this. I make these a lot prettier now because I have the CNC plasma table. 
Unfortunately, at this exact moment, I'm out of three quarter inch material, so I gotta get another sheet um, ordered. But yeah, so, and also when I cut out these side plates, I have a nice arch. Um, I use half inch plate instead on the side pieces and make a nice arch, make it pretty. And I have to make a hole for the uh, hydraulic hose to come out of that you can't see on the back side of the cylinder there because of the way that floats through there. Oh, and not only are the parts CNC plasma cut now, which makes them look a lot prettier, they're also powder coated, which makes them look a whole lot prettier. So I kind of hate to show you all my ugly prototype piece here. This is definitely a proof of concept, and that is it. It's ugly. Anyway, I made a bunch of notes here and made myself a little chalk sketch just to kind of see if this is what I want. Um, the thing that I'm not sure about is if I just cut this plate out like this, it's just a rectangle, right? It doesn't look very good. So I was thinking about tapering it, you know, cutting off these corners. Oops, move, whatever, just chalk drawing. Do both sides, that way we can kind of visualize a little bit better. Maybe even rounding off this end just a little bit. Kind of give it a little bit of a, I don't know, better shape, something like that. All right, write down some notes here and then we'll go over to the computer and draw this out, slap this plate up on the plasma table and we'll uh, use the easy scriber first to mark where all the holes need to be drilled and then we'll just cut out the outside profile with the plasma cutter. First thing I'm gonna do is scribe the lines, uh, specifically where all the holes are going to be drilled. I'm not going to cut any of the holes with the plasma table because this is one inch thick plate. I cannot pierce holes with my Hypertherm 85 through one inch plate. Uh, and also, I don't get an accurate enough hole because of the taper of the nozzle and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is scribe where the holes go, then we'll take this out, put it in the mill, and drill all the holes and the scribe lines will just simply help me reference and make sure that I'm on track and in the right locations. I will use the DRO on the mill to make sure I'm drilling the holes in the correct place, but I'll have the scribe lines to make sure that I did my math correctly. So what I use is the Easy Scriber. It's a spring-loaded diamond uh, scribe point thing that goes in the plasma cutter torch makes life really easy this way. So we just pull all the guts out of there. Set them somewhere where I don't drop them. Put my low shield on. Drop the easy scriber in there. Uh, screw the end back on. And we're ready to scribe. I've ran the scriber once, but I couldn't see through the chalk lines, and there was actually overspray paint on this. I couldn't see my scribe lines through all that, so I sharpied where I think the scribes are, and we're going to rescribe it. see that a lot better now. All right, now we'll switch to the plasma parts and cut this piece out.
to do this all over again for the bottom plate or the anvil. So I'm just going to show you a couple seconds of each process here before we jump over to the mill and start making holes. Okay, I think I have my cutter where I want for the center hole. I'm going to do the center hole first because everything is relative to the center hole. So if I goof up, lose my DRO settings, whatever, I can put this bit back in the machine, put it in that center hole, reset, and find all the other holes. So, hope that makes sense to ya. Alright, so this is a inch and a half annular cutter. And let's see if my speed is Power feed. I find annular cutters work a lot better when I power feed down with them. Not nah, safe at all. All right. Well, I'm gonna drive over to the next place. So I'm gonna start over here. We'll drive over. Oh, 1.875, and see if it looks right. Having a oh, too far. Take out the backlash, five, six, seven, five. On the nose, when I lock the gib, it won't be. Okay, and 1.875 this way. Makes a really nice chamfer on all the holes. Real easy to do. I love that little mosquito. Well, now we will switch to the anvil. That actually cut pretty crooked. Is that gonna stay down in there? Nope. Oh, okay, I gotta use a little shorter uh, <sighs> parallels because my edge is kind of got a little bit of a lip right here. I don't know if you can see that on camera very well or not, but oh, there you go. It's not sitting, gosh, I got, didn't cut quite right, so that nozzle might be a little bit wore out. My old anvil was a two inch hole in here, which was just barely big enough, but I just didn't want to go any thinner on the sidewalls on it. So this ends up with a half inch sidewall each side. This plate is three inches wide. So that's why I went with two inches, but I do push things off a two inch shaft every once in a while. So I do have a two and a quarter inch annular cutter. So we're gonna go up to that and call it good. And I think that'll give me plenty of clearance. If I need to go bigger someday, I can. I can build a different plate real easy if I need to. I have a design in my head for a plate that has square blocks out here that slide over the rods and then pins through them that hold two strap irons that go this way so i just have this entire you know three inch gap or whatever i use in there as a slot instead of having the anvil like this but 
This will work for a lot of things, and this is more what I need for right now. So we're making this real quick. That's what I'm saying. Don't know if you care about the entire backstory or not. Okay, so I think is what I'm gonna do on this is uh, I got some half inch by three inch flat bar and I think I'm just gonna take it in the bandsaw and cut it at a, I don't know, 60 degree angle. Put it on the side here, put some beads in here. I won't weld it solid by any means. And uh, yeah, that'll be my side gussets. Get this plate pre-warmed, pre-warmed? I guess, whatever. To warm this plate just a little bit so when I go to welding it's not welding a block of ice. Cause I just took the temperature of the floor, the concrete floor of my shop is 34 degrees right now. That's been laying on the floor and it is cold. So I've got her up to about 103 right now. And I'll take it off of there and we'll set it over here on the plasma table get everything clamped up and start welding it together. And a fly just landed in that. Where the hell did a fly come from? It's freaking middle of winter. 28 degrees outside right now. A fly just landed in that. Right. I think I'll just set it on its side here and All right, give you a quick glimpse of my welds here real quick before I clean them all up. You can see there's a little bit of spatter on there, but not bad. So, not bad little welds. And there it is all clean. I'm really happy with them welds inside there. Those turned out really nice. I was actually worried about these welds in here being too beaded up, too tall, but I mean, that came out really, really nice. Really nice. All right, now that we're done with this, we're gonna jump to the top cylinder again, get that top plate reinforced, but tomorrow, because I have put in a really long day. As you can see, it's 10, almost 10, 18 at night. So uh, I'm going to bed. This thing turned out extremely flat. I am really, really impressed. Got this cold rolled flat bar sitting here that's pretty straight and I wish y'all could feel things through the camera, but this flat bar literally sucks itself down onto this anvil. Like it is so flat that, you know how it is when you get two flat surfaces that are just perfect and they actually take a little force to pull them apart. You can feel that suction effect. That is exactly what's going on. I cannot believe this anvil turned out that flat. Next, I'm going to cut out the pieces or the upper part of the press. So I gotta get my sheet loaded here on the table, move my stuff around. So it'll be a while, but for you, it'll just be this interesting little dissolve and we'll start cutting things out.
layout lines on here of where the bends are supposed to be. So we're going to try bending these up and make them fit. I put this hole in them for the outlet on the hydraulic cylinder. However, the way I've got my hydraulic cylinder set up with an elbow on it, I don't think you would ever be able to use that. You know, you would never be able to get that outlet 90 through there when you're trying to set it in a channel like this. Like, how do you wiggle that cylinder around in there and get it set up? I don't expect it to work. We'll try once I get it all welded together just to see. But uh, the way I'm putting the cylinder in here, the outlet will be over here sideways anyway, so it's not going to matter. But I thought, well, you know, options are good, right? See if I can get this uh, spot well in place. I got some spacers set under there. And uh, hopefully it doesn't work when I go to weld it all. Oh, why well, I moved that a lot in a hurry. anymore because I got both sides on. That'd be too much. Yo. It's almost cool enough to handle now. It's like 124 degrees when I measured it. Checked its temperature. So I think you can see my welds down in there. Came out pretty darn nice. Not bad at all, eh? And these are probably doable. Let's uh, put this on there. This is a heck of a press. 
That is going to be yeah. Set that up there. Then I'll put my new bearing in. This is the old bearing. And that. And that. Look at that room. Oh my word. This is going to go awesome. Oh. I really, really, really like this press. Oh. Now I'm going to powder coat it. I'm debating if I want to powder coat this top of this anvil. Because if you set something on there all the time, you want to set on the powder coating. It's just going to knock it off. Doesn't matter. I don't know. But yeah, look at this thing. That is nice. Yeah, buddy. Oh, I'm so excited to put this water pump together. Now, I have to put the water pump back together in this direction because the bearing fits through this hole. It does not fit through this hole. So, yep. Yeah. And this is the whole reason why I couldn't use my other press to get this thing back together, even though I got it apart with the other press. Because by the time you stack all this up and put a press die on there, then I was an inch taller than any jack I could find that would fit in that other press and get it back together. Straighten out, feels good. Nope, we'll walk there. there we go. Ah, good. Not even registering pressure on the gauge over here. That's pushing together super easy. I think it's incorrect. Put the snap ring in. We'll start pressing everything else together. Next step is to push the seal, whatever they call this thing, the one inside the pump on. Uh, so I machined myself out a little pusher on her doohickey. So hopefully that is correct. Well, I didn't get done before the storm hit us. Got some sleep ball stuff coming down. Got ice built up on everything. Don't think I'll change the water pump on this welder today. So anyway, I think I'll end this video here. I am going to powder coat this thing. And then in the future, I am actually going to make a metal bender die for this so I can bend metal because when I make my kindling creators, I would like to have something set up at all time to bend the thick metal because in this press, I like to have it set up for sheet metal all the time, which is not those dies. So I have to swap the dies back and forth all the time and that's very time consuming, right? So I'd like to have that press set up for sheet metal and then have this press set up for thicker metal. So uh, there's more to come on this press. If you would like one of these presses, send me an email. I don't know what the price is going to be because the price of steel fluctuates all the time. Send me an email and uh, I'll shoot you the price. Okay, anyway, I'm talking way too long, but that is awesome.